Okay, I'm going to build a bench. I'm starting with this bundle. These are our six pieces that are six feet long. They're two by two hollow, 16 gauge, square tube. I picked them up here in uh, New York State at Albany Steel. I have a vague idea of what I want to do, and I know it basically starts out with a frame with mitered corners, as you can see I'm cutting here. I'm using this Evolution chopping saw. It actually works really well. It's a, a blade designed to cut through metal and wood and it does that very well. And the cut list here is sort of in my mind. I know what I need to do. I know the size I want to use. I'm making a bench that's about 53 inches wide by 20 inches deep on the, the seat and then the height of the back is about 22 inches. And so I'm just going through all the cuts and um, making sure that everything matches because I want to really be sure that we have a nice square look because that is basically the style of this bench. It's going to be very square. And then that little, it's about six or seven degree chamfer right there, that's going to create the tilt on the back. So that's the left and right sides of the upright back and I'm just making sure that opposite sides are exactly the same and right there that's going to be the cross member that would sort of sit at your lower back so I want to make sure that everything is the same left and right and now here's my Lincoln MP210 I'm just getting my settings right 16 gauge and this computer panel helps you get there a little bit easier and I just up the voltage a little bit for some more penetration now I had two camera angles going here at the same time so you could just see two different things. I had a GoPro and my Nikon at the same time. The Nikon obviously was a little bit brighter. But here I am, I'm just tacking my frame. This is what's going to be the seat and that's just kind of the, the spot where I began. To me that was the most obvious spot to begin making this bench. And I checked my diagonals and I'm off by about three quarters of an inch. And because I'm just tacked I could still rack the frame a little bit by tapping it on the ground and just those few little taps got me exactly where I needed to be so I checked my diagonal and then I also checked my 90 with a framing square and now I start laying down some strong beads to trap that shape in space and here with the overhead shot you could just see the layout and uh, you'll notice I'm using my metal horses that I had built in a previous video and the nice thing about it is that I'm grounded to the horses. So as I work, I don't need to worry about the ground clamp moving around on my project. And there, I felt a sense of accomplishment finishing this seat. And when I build, my workflow typically is to weld a little bit and grind a little bit and weld a little bit and grind a little bit. I don't like leaving the grinding all to, to the very end. I like to get it out of the way as I go. And considering this again is the seat of my project, I want to be sure there are no welds in place. And now because uh, I have a back that's going to go up against the seat, I have a guide now for my exact shape. So I'm using the, the seat frame as a guide for my back frame. And I'm tacking it together. And once I know it's tacked together, I lay some beads in there. And one thing I also kept checking, which you can't really notice, is I wanted to make sure that I wasn't twisted. My horses are level left to right, and because my frame was level on top of those horses, my back was level on top of the frame. And so it's important because once it's twisted, it's difficult to untwist it. If you do all those crazy welds and you realize that your frame has a twist in it, you have to cut a couple of things to straighten it out and weld it again. So while you're in the tack phase, make sure that you're not twisted. And here I just lift it to right where I want it. And I throw a tack on it. No crazy clamping necessary. Because the tack's going to be more than sufficient. And I fast forward through a lot of this because, of course, it's a little monotonous. And it's fun to watch something come together fast. So now I got my seat frame and I got my back frame together. 
I set the saw back up on top of the frame so that I could work on the legs, the front legs, and the armrests. I'm using 2x4 for the armrest, 2x4 scrap that was laying around from a previous project. And when I started this chair, I, I had a couple of images in mind. Nothing was crystal clear, but while it started to take shape, it started to also become more clear exactly what I wanted to do. And here I am setting up the armrests against the front legs. And I'm taking extra care to make sure that everything's parallel and square. You see me using the speed square there. And I'm pretty confident I got everything where I wanted, so I laid down some heavy beads. I just tacked under the arm, which was important because later on I, I opened it up a little bit so that the inside of that arm and the inside of that leg are in the same plane. Right there, I had it overlapping a little bit. And I'm just laying down beads now on the opposite side. And it's important, the workflow, if I weld in a particular pattern on one side, I try to remember that same pattern on the other side so that I get all my beads where they need to be. Because there'll be times where I build a project like this and I realize I left out a whole bunch of beads that are important and would con consider it to look unfinished. So I try and make my workflow go in a way that I get all the beads covered. And they're the rear legs. The rear legs are two inches shorter because I wanted this bench to kick back. I wanted you to feel like you were sitting in a little bit of a recline. And there you see me scribing the front legs to the floor. I left them a touch long. And when I scribe them to the floor, now the bottom of the leg matches the tilt of the chair. And now it's time to put in the framework that's going to carry the eBay boards. These are 1x4 eBay and the seats are about about 18 inches long and the back I think is about 17 inches long. And the Ipe boards were the impetus for this project because these boards were left in my shop by my friend who was doing a, a roof deck and he used my tools and he left all this valuable scrap. And I knew that I wanted to use it in this fashion but it wasn't until I began this project that I really had a clear idea how I wanted to use them. And here you see me cutting the boards all to length with a a set stop on my chop saw and I laid the boards out and I had a enough room to be able to space them evenly and that's why I'm using this leather I'm gonna glue a piece of leather between each one of the boards so that I can space them evenly because I'm gonna put the boards in and out a couple of times while I'm trying to get my spacing accurate and this is gonna help me keep it perfect and that's what you see me doing there. I use a little bit of jade glue and I actually put two stacks of leather at each one after I did my initial try. It helps spread it out that much more. And I'm not worried if they fall out later because by the time the project's done the boards will be screwed in place. And now once I knew where the boards were going to live you see the little white dots or indications of where I needed to make my drill in the framework. And so I'm just laying out all the drill holes, which are going to receive screws later on. And now I wipe the whole project down with degreaser and maybe a little bit of acetone. And I'm using Permalac. Permalac is a spray can lacquer, which will slow the rusting process. It won't eliminate it. A bench like this outside is definitely going to need some maintenance. And I'm gluing the boards in, and I'm going to let them dry for a little while before I come back and put screws in from behind. I do the, the back and now I'm doing the seat and this is just to keep them in place. I want to know what they're going to look like while I'm working on it. I don't want to put one board in then the next board then the next board. And now once that silicone is dry I can turn the bench completely over, pre-drill and then put screws in every board. You have to pre-drill at Ipe, the screw will break otherwise. And considering I am in New York and everything gets stolen I weld this big eye on the bottom and that's to accept either a, a chain and a lock or in my case I have what's called a, a motorcycle cuff. And here I'm doing a quick rubbing of the profile of the end. Those extrusions, those square tubes are a different shape everywhere you cut them so I wouldn't trust anything but a rubbing exactly where I was going to place my piece of wood. I chamfer my wood a little bit because I know I'm going to hammer them into the open hole. 
and the taper gets me started and it just gets tighter as I hammer it in and I do the next one and they fit there and really nice the rubbing gives me the the perfect fit I'm just using some teak oil and this bench is certainly going to need maintenance being outside full time so this teak oil is only going to last a little while and that permalax is only going to last a little while the rainwater and air conditioner drips from the building everything is working on this bench and there I'm happy with my completed project and uh, this is sort of my beauty shots I didn't want to paint it black because while it sat outside I just figured people would sit there and scratch their initials into the hand and in preparation for putting it outside full time I'm using Tapcon screws into a little detail on the front of the building and there's a, my other eyelet which the handcuff is going to go in and I put crazy glue into the openings of the screws so you couldn't really get another screwdriver in there and I got that handcuff in place the bench is in place and as soon as I put it out it started attracting people and it's become a pretty good fixture for me every morning I sit out there I check my emails if I'm waiting for somebody I got a place to park and hang out and I'm really happy I put armrests on it because it holds coffee perfectly and uh, it really does attract a lot of people I come up there and about every 20 minutes there's somebody new sitting on it and it is actually really comfortable to lay on to I made the armrest a little bit lower to give the bench kind of a more low slung feel and you'll notice the floor is a little uneven which is why I have that wedge there I'll probably go back and make that one leg a little longer just for the spot that it's sitting thank you for watching I hope you learned something